Mac OS Sequoia just got released, and I am not in my studio to record this. So Mac OS Sequoia just dropped, and in case you weren't prepared for it and you haven't put the proper restrictions in place and haven't upgraded your applications to make sure that users are going to be functional on day one, we're going to show you how to put all the restrictions in place that you need to make sure that users aren't able to upgrade. Uh, so the first thing we're going to put together is a configuration profile to restrict major Mac OS upgrades. So many are computers, configuration profiles, go to new. Call this um, restrict Mac OS Sequoia. Okay, we want to use the restrictions payload. So, and I will say, if you already have a restrictions payload in place, you don't want two of these. That would be a conflicting profile and it would cause issues. So you may want to edit your original restrictions profile, if that was the case. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click configure. And then the place we want to go to is functionality. We're going to scroll down to defer updates of. And now this is where you can choose. You can only use only major software updates for however long you want. It goes up to 90 days. Um, I usually just turn this on to 90 days, just so I have the longest time available. And then if I can upgrade before then, which usually I can, then I just go ahead and switch that to off. Um, however, I will note that some older versions of Mac OS, um, this didn't really work. And instead you had to restrict all application and non-software updates. Um, I haven't really tested if this is necessary with um, Monterey or Big Sur, or even potentially with Ventura. So um, please drop a comment down below if you think, if you uh, were able to test with those S versions and see if that is necessary. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead. If you want to be super safe, just defer all software updates for 90 days. People won't be able to do maintenance updates, which can be a problem, but it may be less of a problem than them upgrading to Sequoia, especially if this is something you're going to figure out this week, which most of us are going to do. Um, so I'll just scope this to all computers. So this is the configuration profile I would recommend, and this is going to be the main way you're going to restrict it. However, if you even have older OS versions, uh, one thing you may want to do is create a restricted software title. So this is, and please drop a comment down below if you're able to test this as well. But for older OSs, they're not able to do it through system settings. So usually they download an installer that they can install the OS with. Um, so I, I still don't know if that's the case. Uh, I haven't been able to test this. I don't have all my test devices with me. I'm traveling. Um, but in case that's in place, it's not going to hurt to put this restriction in place. This will basically restrict the application, the installer application from running. So I'm just going to call this restrict Mac OS Sequoia. Process name is going to be install Mac OS Sequoia. And this is, I'm guessing at. Uh, this is just the name format that they've used in the past. Uh, so please drop a comment down below as well if it is, if this is actually still happening with older OS versions. I think it would be maybe Big Sur or below, or potentially even Catalina or below at this point. Um, but and let me know first of all if it's downloading that installer and if it's actually this name. Uh, we're gonna restrict exact process name. Um, I also like to delete the application and kill the process and then send a message to the user, letting them know we're not ready to update to Sequoia yet. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, we're going to want to see if anyone has upgraded to Sequoia. So let's create a smart computer group. I like to put an M before any policy that's going to be monitoring something that's not in scope of other computers. Um, just kind of helps us organize our policies. And I also want to send an email 
notification on membership change. So if anyone does get through our restrictions and get upgrade, I want to see that right away. So I can follow up their user and see if they're running into any problems. We're going to do greater than or equal to 15. And now I'll be able to view that. And no one in Rocketman has actually upgraded to Sequoia yet, but in your server, uh, especially if you hadn't set up these restrictions since this happened last night um, or yesterday, I don't think it was last night, but um, you may see some people in here if you haven't done that yet. Um, I will note too, it's going to have to wait for that inventory update, which isn't going to happen that automatically after a software update. So if you want to see this as quickly as possible, make sure you go into your inventory update policy. And this, for us, it's running once every week. So it's not going to pull in very many people unless they just happen to get, have an inventory update. So just go ahead and flush all these logs. Um, that's usually what I do. You can also create a new policy if you want to, but I typically just flush logs because I'm lazy. And then it will just rerun it at the next check-in. So then you'll be able to see more accurately if someone has upgraded. Okay. And then if you go up to this notification here, you should all see an, at least one notification. You might see more in your server. Uh, but it says we have to update our... Apple's terms and conditions in Apple Business Manager or Apple School Manager if you're a school. So I'm going to go to business.apple.com. All right, and now we're logged in here. And the first thing that pops up when we're logged in is these terms and conditions. So make sure you go through all of these. And then once you have read them, go back and check all of them and click Agree. But it's important to do that because if you don't, eventually the devices will stop automatically get impo getting imported into Jamf Pro. So new computers and mobile devices that are purchased will not get enrolled into Jamf automatically if you don't accept that ter those terms and conditions. I think the grace period is like 30 days. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And that's kind of the main things you need in place if you're just scrambling to make sure you have all the right restrictions and stuff in place as macOS Sequoia just dropped. Um, but I will note, the next thing you need to do is start preparing for macOS Sequoia because that restriction is only going to last for 90 days in the best of worlds. Um, and you really can't do much to restrict it past the 90 days. So we're really in a place where we need to start preparing for that upgrade. Um, so take a look at all your core software. Get a beta team together of people that can upgrade to macOS Sequoia so you can test out which ones of your applications are working and which ones aren't. Um, and then the, the applications you really want to focus on are going to be those cybersecurity applications. Um, that's going to be your VPN, your web proxy, your endpoint protection solution, and anything else that's an enterprise solution running in the background, especially anything that has any type of system extension, because those are the things that are probably going to cause the most problems if they start breaking. Uh, the, the main applications that people use, usually they can just upgrade them pretty easily, and those typically stay up to date by themselves. So that's it for how to prepare for this new macOS upgrade. Thank you so much for joining us and keep jamping.